Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today I will be doing my top 20 favorite Stephen King adaptations. Now a lot of these picks are based off nostalgia, but I still love the top 20 today. So sit back, relax, and let the show begin. Number 20 is Riding the Bullet. This came out in 2004 and I wasn't expecting much, but it seems to get better with each viewing. Set in the 1970s, the main character has to walk and hitchhike to visit his mother in the hospital. And along the dark and quiet roads, he has some ghostly encounters. It's a good little gem by Mick Garris. Number 19, Shawshank Redemption. This is a great movie and one of the best Stephen King adaptations. I've seen it at least 25 times. I love prison movies. But I love my fantastical horror more, and that's why it places so high. Still a great watch today, and I acknowledge that this is a more polished overall movie than a lot of my upcoming picks. But like I said, nostalgia always wins in the end. Number 18 is At Pupil. Rest in peace, Brad Renfro. This movie is fantastic. My dad tells me the book is even better, more detailed. Our main character finds out there's an ex-Nazi living nearby. He befriends him in hopes of hearing about the war, but in the process causes Ian McKillen's character as the Nazi to slowly break down and start to lose it. It's a real terrific film. Number 17 is Cujo. This 1983 classic is terrifying. When Dee Wallace is trapped in the car with her son, I feel so uneasy. Not necessarily because of Cujo, but because of when they start to dehydrate. As a parent, I know I would have to take on the beast to save my child. No other options. And that type of horror is the most frightening to me. Number 16 is The Langoliers. This two-part TV movie probably wouldn't make most people's list, but I love it. I saw it when I was eight and I just loved the Twilight Zone type vibe. Although the effects are cheesy, I still love it today. It's also directed by Tom Holland. He did movies like uh, Child's Play, Thinner, and Fright Night, so it's pretty decent. Number 15 is The Dark Half. This 1993 movie directed by George Romero is excellent, and Timothy Hutton playing a dual role is terrific. Really well done movie, and people who haven't seen it, I would highly recommend it. Probably Romero's most underrated movie of all time. Number 14 is Creepshow. Another George Romero film, Creepshow is a fun 80s anthology movie with Stephen King himself in one of the stories, although it's probably my least favorite story of them all. Still a great time. It's great 80s fun. Number 13 is Storm of the Century. This two-part TV movie is one of my favorite to watch during a snowstorm. I love the isolated location. And Confier as Andre Lenoge, this sinister demon who plagues Little Tall Island, is fantastic. It's long at around four hours, but it flows beautifully and never feels like a four hour movie. I love this one. Number 12 is The Night Flyer. This is a great 90s horror movie. Dwight Renfield, aka The Night Flyer, is a terrific monster. The makeup effects are top notch. The ending is brutal and very satisfying at the same time. Still love watching this one today. Number 11, Needful Things. This 1993 movie is so much fun. Max von Sydow plays Leland Gaunt, an antique dealer. He has something for everybody. The price? Your soul. Fantastic cast all around. Great setting. Needful Things needs a Scream Factory release ASAP. Number 10 is It. Another two-part TV movie made in 1990. This one's so much fun. I especially love the first half with the kids in the 50s. And Tim Curry as Pennywise really delivers an iconic performance. I still prefer this version to the new one today. Number nine is The Graveyard Shift. This is another one I want Scream Factory to do. I absolutely love this 80s cheese. The setting in the mill is perfect. And Stephen Mack as Warwick is iconic. He may have my favorite voice in movie history. I could listen to that man speak for eternity. And now a quick word from our sponsor. You ever run the picker? Number eight is The Stand. This massive four part TV movie is a fun ride. It's extremely long, clocking in at around six hours. And there's definitely some low points, but all in all, I love The Stand journey. I've seen it at least 30 times, never gets old to me. Mick Garris directs this end of the world epic and I applaud him for his efforts. Number seven is Silver Bullet. Whenever I think werewolf movies, this is always the first one I think of. It's such a great 80s film. I love Corey Haim and Gary Busey in this. Rest in peace, Corey. He plays a believable paraplegic, fearing for his life, 
and some of the kills are downright disturbing. An excellent 80s movie. Number 6. The Running Man Written by Richard Bachman, a.k.a. Stephen King, The Running Man is one of a few books King used an alias for. This movie is so much fun, perfect 80s cheese, so many quotable lines. Schwarzenegger was on the verge of becoming a superstar, and I always love revisiting this film. Number 5. Is Pet Cemetery, Quite possibly the most terrifying Stephen King adaptation ever. This movie still scares me today. There are a few scenes, most notably the death of Gage, that are very tough to watch. I always seem to close my eyes. Very effective horror film, in more ways than one. Number 4 is The Shining. Although Kubrick pretty much just used some elements of King's book, most notably the Overlook Hotel, the two stories are very much different. Every time I watch The Shining, I just feel like I'm watching a masterpiece from the opening shot. Watching Jack Nicholson slowly break down truly is one of the best performances in movie history. Such a classic. Number 3. Stand By Me. I love this movie. The director Rob Reiner really delivered a true timeless classic. Fantastic ensemble of actors, a great 50s setting, and a tremendously fun journey that I never get bored of. Just a beautiful movie with a great soundtrack. And rest in peace, River Phoenix. Number two is John Carpenter's Christine. This one is a masterpiece in my eyes. Beautifully crafted by Carpenter, and the score really heightens the movie. The cast is phenomenal, and the watch Arnie's transformation along with his car Christine is remarkable. For 1983, some of the best special effects, and still holds up today. Love this one. Number one is Misery. Another masterpiece delivered by Rob Reiner. Misery is terrifying. Just imagine yourself in Paul Sheldon's position, played amazingly by James Caan. It's unnerving. You're trapped by the weather. You're trapped by your injuries. And you're trapped with a real nut who thinks she's your number one fan. Kathy Bates is phenomenal. On par with Anthony Hopkins as Hannibal Lecter. Just such a classic. So that's the list, guys. I left a few off that uh, were hard. Most notably, Carrie, Firestarter, Dead Zone, Salem's Lot, Cat's Eye. Sometimes they come back thinner, but I couldn't fit them all in. So thanks for watching, and let me know what you think of the list. Take care, guys. Bye. This is a way of life. Yeah. The Diggler.